Meeting call to order. Madam Clerk, may I have a roll call, please? Commissioner Ayon. Present. Commissioner Bruin. Commissioner Couch. Here. Commissioner Flores. Here. Commissioner Fowler. Here. Commissioner Arias. I am here. Commissioner McKibben. Here. Commissioner Saragoza. Here. Roll call complete. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Um, Totally dropped the ball, but uh, uh, Gary, is it, uh, uh, for an invocation, you can stand, uh, sit down, bow your head. Uh, Gary, be leading us in invocation today. And leading us, uh, please remain standing. Uh, leading us and pledge allegiance is Commissioner Baxter. Barber. Salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag <laughs> of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Gary, and thank you, Barbara. Moving on to item number four. Uh, Madam Clerk, uh, do we have any commissioners attending a video conference? We do. Eric Bruin. Go ahead. Uh, Go ahead. At the December 2020 meeting of the commission, uh, they, we, we approved the use of SB 2449 to hold meetings both in person and virtually under specific circumstances. In this case, Commissioner Bruin is... Uh, has a meeting in Ridgecrest and is not able to travel over. Uh, so it is my recommendation to make a finding of an emergency or just cause for attending via video conference per the requirements of SB 2449. Okay, thank you. We need a do motion. I have, do I have a motion to, uh, in it? Motion Fowler. Second. We have a motion sure. by Commissioner Fowler, second by Commissioner Flores. Flores. Madam Clerk, may I have a uh, roll call, please? Commissioner Ayon? Aye. Commissioner Bruin? Commissioner Couch? Yes. Commissioner Flores? Yes. Commissioner Fowler? Yes. Commissioner Arias? Aye. Commissioner McKibben? Yes. Commissioner Saragoza? Aye. All ayes, motion passed. Th thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, do we have anybody from the public that would like to make a comment regarding this item? Seeing none. Okay, moving on to the uh, approval of the minutes of September 18, 2024. Um, do I have anybody from the public that wants to make a comment on that um, from that meeting? Seeing none. Um, do I have any commissioner comments or questions? No. Seeing none. Do I have a motion? Motion. Motion. Second. Motion, motion by Commissioner Flores. Flores, second by Commissioner Couch. Madam Clerk, may I have a roll call, please? Commissioner Ayon? Aye. Commissioner Bruin? Commissioner Couch? Yes. Commissioner Flores? Yes. Commissioner Fowler? Yes. Commissioner Arias? 
I was not at this meeting and I did not get a chance to watch, so I'm going to go ahead and abstain. Commissioner McKibben? Yes. Commissioner uh, Saragoza? Aye. All ayes, motion passed. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, moving on to item six, public comment. This portion of the meeting is reserved for persons desiring to address the commission on any matter not on the agenda and over which the commissioners have jurisdiction. Speakers are limited to two minutes. Please state your name and address for the record before making your presentation. Madam Clerk, do we have anybody for public comment? No. Okay, thank you. Moving on. Moving on to item number eight, or well, item number seven, determination proceedings. We have none. Item number eight, notice of public hearings. Uh, 1828 City of Bakersfield, Annexation 711, Taft Highway number four. Re the proposal is to annex approximately 1,058.92 acres of land consisting of four parcels located south of McCutcheon Road, east of Old River Road, north of Ingle Road, on both sides of Taft Highway. This annexation was initiated by the city and, uh, and multiple property owners for the purpose of multi-use development. The surrounding properties are residential, commercial, industrial, agriculture, and open ground. This proposal does, does not have 100% land owner consent. This ap applic applicant has been notified that notice hearing and protest hearing will not be waived. Mr. Executive Officer Blair Knox. Yes, just quickly, uh, there are more than four parcels on, on this annexation. Just want to correct that. Uh, this is the first of several annexations requested by the city of Bakersfield to meet their regional housing requirements. Uh, there will be no change in zoning associated with this formation. Uh, Pre-zoning has already been done. It is consistent with a general plan, regional transportation plan, or specific plan. Uh, there are parcels that have Williamson Act contracts. There is a discrepancy with the county on which parcels. My understanding is that there was a parcel with an act of contracts. contract. The parcel was split and a portion was sold. It appears the portion that was sold no longer has an active contract, but the county has not been able to locate the documentation that indicates that the contract was terminated. County staff is researching this matter and hasn't come to a conclusion yet. In the meantime, the city of Bakersfield has agreed to take over and manage uh, any and all con Williamson contracts that are within the, the, these boundaries, no matter the size or number of parcels included. With that situation, I'm requesting a condition that the annexation be approved, but not, but not be completed until the matter is resolved. This conforms with assessor's parcels. There is no functional overlap as Taft Highway 119 runs through the proposed area. Both CHB and Bakersfield Police Department will have jurisdiction in the area. Annexation will uh, eventually lead to additional water use. The, the city's municipal service review addresses the additional usage and it is within the water allotment the city has as part of the groundwater sustainability plan for the area. CEQA is handled by a notice of exemption. We have an indemnification agreement. And there will be no change in taxation. There is no disadvantage on the incorporated community uh, within or adjacent. And fire will be provided by the city using an MOU with the county to cover this area. While I'm recommending approval of this annexation is not without issues. Two of LAFCO's authorities have to do with orderly growth and ag land preservation. They say this annexation will place high density residential development next to and on top of productive farmland and eventually take farmland out of production. Why is this an issue? Well, for, for several reasons. Modern fa farming is not always compatible with residential neighborhoods, especially neighborhoods that are high density. Adding additional traffic in farm, farming areas is difficult on the surrounding roads and can conflict with farm equipment in the area. Trash, pesticide spray, planting and harvesting are all impacts that are difficult to address and often cause conflicts. This annex annexation sits at the intersection of Rena and Sigma. As authorized by the Cortese Knox Hertzberg, this commission is expected to protect farmland. At the same time, Sigma is requiring that farmland be taken out of production to reduce irrigation and, and stabilize the water table. When I have mentioned this conflict to state officials, they shrug their shoulders. And if you don't know what shrug his shoulders means in government slangs, it means don't look at me, 
is somebody else's problem. On top of Sigma, RENA is requiring cities and counties to build a significant amount of high density, so-called affordable housing, without regards to the ability to place this development in urban centers. The cost to the city is that they, if they do not build additional high density residential, the state withholds a significant amount of funding, and in the end it comes down to money. Affected and overlapping agencies and districts were notified and comments were provided and included in this report and recommendation. Therefore, it is my recommendation that the commission consider the notice of exemption followed by the applicant. It is further recommended that the commission approve the annexation 711 TAF number four to the city of Bakersfield and not waive notice hearing and protest hearing and subject to the conditions recommended by the executive officer. Thank you, Mr. Knox. Do we have any uh, public comment regarding this item? Let me know when you're ready. When, when it stops, I mean. Okay. <laughs> I'm glad he's doing that and not me. I would mess it up. <laughs> All right, I'll start again, especially for those who are participating virtually. My name is Lori Passante, and uh, the Passante Family Trust um, owns parcels that are subject to this annexation. And uh, my children are the fifth generation of Passantes to be born on this property. Um, the notice and information related to this annexation, um, despite our best efforts to reach out to people at the city and at the county, I would say, I would characterize as being insufficient. So my ask is that any interested parties, any, any agencies or other folks that are a part of this annexation, um, from here moving forward, I officially on the record ask you to reach out to me and my husband, Andrew, and we're more than happy to provide our email addresses to anybody who, um, who I need to give them to because I, I had to dig <laughs> to find information. And some of the communications with my mother-in-law out on the property have been, I'll just characterize it again as saying, woefully insufficient. So please provide information to us about this moving forward. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any other public comments regarding this annexation? Seeing none, closing public comment. Commissioners, any questions, concerns regarding this annexation? Go ahead, Ms. Fowler. I have a question for Mrs. Pizzante, if you wouldn't mind coming forward again. Um, how many parcels is the Pizzante property? We're right on the frontage road on Taft Highway across from the Kaiser Permanente um, Sports Park. Um, I believe it's a total of three, but there have been some changes over the many generations. So I can't quite, and again, I just barely received the information, so I'm not, I haven't totally looked at it yet, but um, it's right there on the frontage road on the south east side corner of Gosford um, and Taft Highway. It would be that corner there. And you, to your knowledge, you've received no outreach from the city of Bakersfield? 
No, we had to um, make an appointment and go speak to them. Um, we did have a conversation with Mr. Boyle, um, but that was about a year and a half ago now, and we asked at that time to be notified of how this was proceeding through you know, any hurdles, and we received no, <laughs> no updates from anybody about anything. And would it be your wish to be excluded from the annexation, or you are undecided about it? We're not taking a position with, without further information. Um, and really, the ultimate decider is my husband and his mom. And I'm trying to support their efforts to understand what's happening. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Bassan, take. Hi. Hi. Hi, Lori. Hi. I had a quick question. Uh, and I'm going to ask our GIS analyst, can you bring up the map? Yeah, that's what I'm trying to do right now. OK. Uh, I'm having difficulty getting to these screens. Okay, just if you know how many acres are involved in the trust, just 20, 20. 20 mm -hmm. of the 1,000. Approximately acres. 20. 20. <laughs> are they um, contiguous or are they separated? Contiguous. Contiguous, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, it would be nice to see a map, but I guess we're having some technical issues. Well, and I'll tell you right now, I just got, my mother in law only got a little thing in the mail that just said, this is happening tonight, and that's it. Are so you in ag production now? Yes, a, po a portion of it is in ag production. And what are you raising or growing? Currently, is it alfalfa right now? Yeah, we don't know. They're planting something out there. Commissioners, can we uh, ask the chair before we interrupt? Because I don't think Mr. Uh, he was done with questions. So. No, um, I think uh, Barbara had a good question because I forgot to ask about the production. So it is an act of farming. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's just not on paper. You're actually growing crops, which we need. Yes. 20 acres, and uh, if there is a way to accommodate your request, but we don't know what your request is. Is it to? To receive information about when public hearings are happening and any associated documentation that's being used to make the decisions at those hearings. I think that tells us we can proceed because you just want to be involved in the process. Is that what I'm hearing? Yes. Good. That's mm -hmm. all. Thank you. Commissioners, is there any other questions or concerns from any other commissioners? Go ahead, uh, Mr. Adis. Thank you, Chair. Um, I just want to share that um, and underscore really what Blair shared, uh, which is that this is going to be a series of annexation packages that are going to be coming before um, this body um, in an effort to come into compliance with our RENA goals um, and to ultimately be able to submit a, a successful housing element. Uh, package. I'll share that uh, the city of Bakersfield is responsible for 76% of low and very low income units that are going to be coming into Kern County um, over the next few decades. And so uh, this is an effort to create some space uh, to accomplish that, that, that goal. Um, that said, um, throughout this entire process, obviously starting with this um, item, uh, we want to be fully transparent with all landowners and property owners, engage them as best as we can, um, uh, and you know, make sure that we're doing everything we can to share um, accurate information. Um, and also, you know, like I said, just be completely transparent. So um, Gary and we have a couple of other staff members here tonight. If we could just engage Ms. Passante, maybe share a little bit about what our process has been uh, for outreach. Yeah, we we would be happy to uh, meet with the Passante family. I, as um, Ms. Passante had mentioned, um, probably during the the zone the pre zoning uh, designations and process, our director at the time, uh, Ms., uh, Mr. Chris Boyle of Director of Development Services, uh, did an extensive outreach, and because of kind of the the lag and the delay. Uh, of moving forward with these uh, larger annexations. Um, we definitely can improve on making sure that we're getting information out to uh, those that are involved. I will say uh, from, and we'd be happy to set up a meeting tonight with you uh, both to, to share the benefits of being a part of the city in the future. And any, any other questions you may have, we'd be happy to, to share that with you. Um, <clears throat> I will also say that the, all of these an larger annexations, especially this one, uh, they are developer-driven. So the meeting 
the meaning behind that is the uh, development community came to us and said, we have uh, properties either under uh, contract or they will be under contract and not all, right? Uh, but, but a significant number of these parcels. So there's not four parcels in this thousand acres, there's 32 <laughs> parcels yes. in these thousand acres. Is that, I just wanna make sure that's yes. accurately uh, on the record. Um, so there's a, a large number of parcels um, that are part of this annexation. And so um, we will make sure that information gets out to, um, to those that are affected in this. Uh, there has been information that, that has been uh, disseminated, but a more, more current uh, set of information needs to, to get out there. Okay. Gary, this is Vince. Hi. Um, I wanted to say that's good news that you're going to be able to be customer service oriented and set up a meeting with the uh, Pisanta family. The question I have is, uh, there's two questions. One is, what percentage of the 1,000 acres is actually in use or zoned ag right now? Do you know? I'm going to defer. Yeah. <laughs> Call upon our planning experts to give us that. Um, I, OK, we, we can follow up with you, uh, Commissioner. OK. Yeah, we, we know where it's going, not the current county designation. Which is a second question related to that. Actually, I have three questions. Second question then would be <clears throat> if someone is in a production ag situation, they're actually producing or uh, cropping, their land would continue as long as they wanted to. Correct. I mean, it, if so yeah. getting back to my original uh, the development community came to us and said they've got a significant significant number of parcels under contract. If if there are some, let's say the Pasante families, not one of those uh, parcels, um, they can continue to have uh, ag if they're not part of that development. Right. Uh, ag proposal. production is allowed within the city of Bakersfield. That's correct. Okay, correct. just wanted to confirm. Sorry. Um, Phil Burns with Development Services Director for City of Bakersfield. So I want to touch upon uh, Gary's answer a little bit there. So how it works within the City of Bakersfield, if a parcel is annexed and is pre-zoned to another use, that historic use stays as long as that historic use doesn't stop for a year period or 12-month period. So if they're farming, as long as they continue to farm, they're good. If they stop farming for a year, then that's, that's when the, the non-conforming status goes away. I just want to clarify for, for right. Pasanti since we're here in the so audience. I have a follow-up question, not not to the ag, but more of a unity map question. So that area is uh, predominantly on the south side of Bakersfield. Obviously, we don't have a map, so sorry about that. And I believe it's adjacent to two wards. That's uh, Ward 5 and 7. So how are those 1,000 acres going to be divvied up? Are they going to be annexed to the wards or other wards? Just curious on that. So um, the interesting uh, part of the ward designation, it does not come before this body. That's a decision that the city council will make at the final determination. So once it's annexed, um, the annexation process is confirmed by LAFCO and it's all recorded. That is brought back to the city council for the city council to determine what ward is divided up. So stay tuned. Come to, come to a city council meeting near you, and uh, you'll find out. All right. I'm just curious because uh, um, the unity map is historically uh, well received right now nationwide, and so there'll be a change, but I'm sure it'll be divvied up appropriately by either city council or planners, depending on who you talk to. Well, it's the city council decision. Okay. Well, it's, it's, okay. It's not, Did not, it's know not that. a planner decision. I asked a, a city staff person. They said the planning department was going to be responsible for that, which is not true. Then. It's the city council. I'm looking at a city council member. <laughs> Go ahead, Mr. Ed. Thank you. Um, I'll, I'll just share that I think with the package of annexations that we'll be presenting to this body is actually going to significantly change kind of the makeup of all wards. And um, um, in, in total agreement with Mr. Hallen, um, in what, six years, <laughs> the, the future city council is going to have a lot to consider. Thank you, Mr. Adams. Mr. Sergo, so there's the map uh, you were requesting. So can they, uh, can you designate, not dis <laughs> pin, pin or, or point to the uh, pensante 
area. Uh, I, I believe it's going to be right in here. Yes, yes. Right here. Right underneath, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what I'm, what you're looking at here was when I originally made the map, this is the uh, zoning from uh, Kern County. And if I switch over, that's Very. the pre-zoning for the city. So you can show the ag. Yes, the yeah, ag. and that's exactly what that does. That shows what's it, what uh, is zoned ag right now. Bud, that's an excellent map. I was looking at it, I actually printed it out. But that's a good map, and uh, it pretty much tells me everything, so yeah. Good to know. Okay. So, okay, I'll just leave it at that. Thank you, Mr. Go ahead, Mr. Knox. So when the city originally comes to us we, with a number of parcels, we look at that, and if there are parcels that create holes, even if they're not, maybe not part of the, the package, the, the original applicants, we try to fill in those holes with those parcels, and the, and the Passantes would be one of those. If, if you look at that map again, um, that, that would create an island of their properties. And so we try to avoid that as much as possible. Uh, it creates a problem with, um, you know, everything from, you know, road, road repairs to, you know, if you, you call the uh, 911, does the sheriff come out, does BPD come out? So you, you try to create a boundary that's, that is more, con more consistent than that. So that we are part of the, that it, that process to try to bring those in um, for for the efficiency of government as well as use of the properties. Thank you, Mr. Knox. Ms. Fowler, did you have a question for Gary? Um, actually, for Mr. Burns, um, I'm interested. Uh, you're designated ag, but if you allow your fields to go fallow for a year, which some farmers do to help enrich the soil, then you lose that ag designation. So, so Ms. Fowler, how, how it actually works is it, the properties have been pre-zoned. Mm -hmm. So the underlying zoning is already whatever it was pre-zoned as, whatever that outreach to the property owner, what they agreed upon, mm -hmm. that's what it was zoned to. So if it was ag now and it's, it's re-zoned to an R1, if it was left fallow for a year, our current municipal code says that, that legal nonconforming is good for 12 months. So it's really so comes it down to, to someone news, complaining so about it that they're now doing something they shouldn't do. We see this a lot more with like industrial trucking yards or stuff like that get annexed that are a little more um, of an issue to neighbors. Uh, I have not in my tenure had uh, a farming issue come up, but I just wanted to provide the, what the code actually says. Well, I'm still confused. Sure. So I'm a farmer on a plot that's designated ag, mm -hmm. but I allow my fields to go fallow for a year. Then I go to zip different zoning if the city chooses so. The zoning has already been changed. So if it's annexed, it's already been pre-zoned in the city. It's mm -hmm. not ag today. As soon as annexation is approved and it's in the city, it's no longer ag zoned. So it's now a legal non-conforming use because that's what it's historically been used as. Does that help? That helps. That's interesting. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions, concerns from the commissioners? Sure. Go ahead, Mr. Addis. Uh, with that, I just want to underscore that staff's going to reach out to the applicant, or excuse me, to the uh, Passante family. Um, and with that, I want to make a motion to approve uh, staff's recommendation tonight. Do I, have a, I have a first. Do I have a second? A second. I have a motion by Commissioner Adia, second by Commissioner Couch. Madam Clerk, may I have a roll call to uh, what's that? Before we have roll call, uh, you want to have a discussion? Yep. Go, Go ahead. Um, I noticed in our packet that this is not a 100% consent, and I did talk to um, Blair and, and discuss that with him today. And because the Pesantes didn't feel that they were properly notified, I'm concerned about other landowners of these on our list that might also not know about this tonight. And um, I think notification's a real issue, and I have no objection to annexing uh, if people are in favor of it, but I think maybe the ball has been dropped here 
I know we'll have a protest hearing, but um, I'm just concerned about it. And I'm also caught because, as uh, Mr. Ayers was saying, the city needs to get this housing in, but it's kind of taking from Peter to pay Paul because the county loses it when the city gains it, and it's, it's kind of a difficult situation that the state of California is putting on us. So I understand that, but when I joined LAFCO, one of the primary cardinal virtues of LAFCO was to maintain ag. And so we're, again, forced into a position where we're caught in a tangle on that. So I'm going to vote against this, not that I have any objection, and those who want to see their property become home property, great, but um, I'm, I'm going to have to say no. Okay, ho hold on. Um, can I ask a question? Oh, I'm sorry. Would you like to go first? I'll, def I'll defer. <laughs> go ahead, Gary. No. Okay. Uh, just a quick comment um, to the the uh, comment from Commissioner Fowler on uh, it's it's a this is a battle, you know, us versus the county. I, I will say that we did bring an item to this commission uh, just last meeting that outlined the county and the city do no, no longer have a battle. This, the county understands uh, the city's annexations that are going to be before this commission, and they have foregone any desires to hold on to those uh, parcels. So and, uh, it, it came to this commission as a, as a presentation from uh, Executive Director Knox that a letter signed between the county and the city agreeing upon moving forward with these annexations. So in terms of I mean, uh, robbing anyone, there's no robbing going on. There's, there's a firm agreement between the county and the city on all of these annexations. Gary, Thank, one more He question. said it better Thank than you. I was going to say it. Okay. Well, then, uh, oh, I'm sorry. sorry. Go ahead, Daniel. Uh, I Couch, do you have a question? No, I, I was going to say what uh, Mr. Helen just, just mentioned, that the city and the county have worked that out. Mm -hmm. We've taken actions in the past that have... Uh, how do I want to say it? We have an ad, we've addressed the arena issue that we have. This helps them address theirs, and we have no objection to it. Um, and I, to say it doesn't have 100% landowner consent, does that mean, I think that what that means is some people haven't said yes. They just, excuse me, they just didn't respond. Is that correct? They, that is correct. They could either not <clears throat> respond might, or might. say we have no. So the, these objection. are. This is not a situation where people have stood up and said, "I do not want this." Uh, even Ms. Pasante, who mentioned today she had concerns, really was about notification and more about plans going forward. They want to be involved and know what's what the development plans are near you and around you. My, she's nodding her head in the affirmative. <laughs> okay, <laughs> thank you. So um, I don't. I know. I understand the commissioner's concerns, but I. I don't share those because I'm kind of reading between the lines here that people are in favor or they just haven't bothered to respond. Thank you, thank Commissioner you. Couch. Correct. Commissioner Flores. Oh, yeah, thank you. Um, I did have a question about the notification process. Who Who's uh, primarily charged with that? It would be the city of Bakersfield or, with, or was it LAFCO? We talked about some, there was some mention of insufficiency. It, it comes from both. Okay. Um, the original um, outreach comes from the city, and then when we get to the point where we're ready to put on the agenda, uh, we send out a notice 21 days before. Okay, so did we do our 21-day? Correct. Okay, so we did our part. Yes, and that's based on the, the addresses and the tax roll. Okay. So if the, if the tax roll is, sometimes that can be as much as 18 months old, so if the property has changed hands. Well, the, the mailing is good as the data, so. Correct. I, I think that we did our, our part, so thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Flores. Uh, is there any other questions? Go ahead, right. Mr. Saragosa. It's probably more for Blair than for Gary, but how many owners are involved? And at least we see one or two here. Um, we've got half a dozen owners or a dozen owners? or. That's a Mr. Rice question. Oh. 19, it looks like, on the list. I was just curious if they're all local or are they absent? 25 different property owners. Well, you're and the addresses are seven, local? Seven, sorry. 70, 19. You're correct. 
And the addresses are Kern County addresses, or are some outside the area? Uh, one's Garden Grove. Some San Diego, some in Garden Grove. Uh, and this is the list from the assessor's office. Uh, we also use a list from the elections for the registered voters. Uh, and I just, I, I, should know, I should know this, I apologize. Are the letters registered, or are they just regular mail? No, they're registered. So you would know? Yeah, they come back to us. Okay. And as far as you can tell, everybody got it, more or less. Got noticed. No, I can't say they got it. I can say that it was sent. <laughs> well, it hasn't came back. Hasn't come back. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm sympathetic to Barbara's comments because as a public commissioner, we want to make sure the uh, public residents um, are informed in a timely fashion. However, I'm glad that uh, the Pisante family is here. And I get the impression they're saying, go forward, just want to be included in the process. I'm thinking maybe the rest of the folks are in the same position. So I will be voting in favor of the annexation. Okay. Thank you. Is there any more discussion regarding this item? Okay. I have a first and a second. Madam Clerk, may I have a roll call, please? Commissioner Ion? Aye. Commissioner Couch? <coughs> yes. Commissioner Flores? Yes. Commissioner Fowler? No. Commissioner Arias? Aye. Commissioner McKibben? Yes. Commissioner Saragoza? Aye. All ayes, motion passed. Oh. No, it wasn't all. Madam Clerk, did you? Commissioner Fowler voted no. One nay, rest our eyes, motion passed. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Moving on to item number nine, we have no commission items. Moving on to no general uh, item 10, general business, approval of monthly expense. This number 24-09, any commissioner questions or concerns regarding the expense list? Seeing none. Move approval. Second. Motion by Commissioner Couch, second, second by Commissioner. Uh, Commissioner Flores, Madam Clerk, may I have roll call, please? Commissioner Young? Aye. Commissioner Couch? Yes. Commissioner Flores? Yes. Commissioner Fowler? Yes. Commissioner Arias? Aye. Commissioner McKibben? Yes. Commissioner Saragoza? Aye. All ayes, motion passed. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Moving on to B, item B, offense lease, lease agreement, Mr. Blair Knox. Yeah, the office lease agreement on 5300 Lenox Avenue expired at the end of May. I had a verbal agreement with property management to continue to occupy the space while Kern Cog completed their office upgrades and a possible deal be worked out for the joint management of the two agencies. The upgrades were completed last month, but the management agreement with Kern Cog has not progressed as quickly as I had hoped. Recently, we received notice that a provision of the expired contract allows for up to 150% increase in rent if the space continues to be occupied past the lease date. I contacted property ownership and worked out a deal to stay uh, an additional six months, which could be terminated or folded into a long-term lease. The rent is the same as it would be in the first year of the five-year lease agreement, and the lease agreement was reviewed by Mr. Schroeder, and he found no issue. It's my recommendation to approve the lease agreement as written. Okay, do you have any uh, public comment regarding this uh, lease agreement? Seeing none, do we have any commissioner comments or questions? Move approval. Seconds. I have the okay. question. Oh, go ahead, Mr. Zaragoza. Um, I'm in favor of a six month lease extension but it is not clear to me why we're only working with another potential commercial property landlord, which is the Crest Building. Are we not looking elsewhere, especially downtown? There's a lot of commercial spaces as well as the other parts, and I'm gonna give you an example. At least one that I'm aware of um, is, I've been in contact with MoneyWise guys, and uh, they're in the process of uh, finishing up the remodel of Woolworth which is right across the street. There'll be a historical luncheonette in retail, just the way it was. It's currently a 44,000 square foot facility. It has a basement 
and it's quite large, I hear, and it's going to be used for um, meetings. The new is going to have a little quick kitchen. The first floor will be restored to historical um, architecture. Second floor will be, um, I believe it'll be for Money Wise and all their lease, uh, the commercial uh, retail folks. The third floor, which is the top floor, which I believe is over 10,000 square feet, will be also commercial retail lease. Whether or not it's going to be open to leasing in the future or whether or not it's going to stay vacant, I don't know, but I got the impression they may want to lease it just because it's going to bring in revenue. And I believe the grand opening date is March 1st of next year. Um, unless I'm wrong. I could be wrong. But is there a reason why we're not looking elsewhere? We just, I think, based on the, what I'm seeing, um, uh, I'm not thinking you're going to get a response from Kern Cog very, very, very quickly. So the idea was Kern Cog currently has a, dish, a space that they're not using. And we could both reduce our, our costs by both being occupying this space, this, this space, this floor. Um, that, that was the idea. And then that morphed into a question from Executive Director Hakimi towards me of whether I would be interested in managing Kerncog, which morphed into <laughs> possibly doing both. And at this point, I have uh, given the board members of Kerncog a uh, proposal, kind of a white paper on what I think that something like that would look like. Um, I also provided it to the, the commission this last week. Um, and if we want to talk about that, we can do that in closed session tonight. Um, I don't want to get into too much of the details um, because if we get into the negotiation issue, that actually has to be handled within closed session. Um, so that, that's how we got to where we are today. I was under the impression that it was always going to be a straight, strictly real estate leasing arrangement. Um, I never thought that management was going to be involved as far as operational combined management. I have not seen an action item on that from the, our commission. So I would prefer just to separate them. I would look for a lease agreement in the next six months, either with current COG or with somebody else, irrespective of the other item that you've mentioned. And that can be discussed in closed session, even though I believe by now, because of the Freedom of Information Act, it is public consumption information because it's been mm -hmm. released to everybody. But that's my point of view. Any discussion? Do we have any discussion regarding this item? Chair. Go ahead, Mr. Otis. Uh, ju just for clarification, this is the item as presented today under 10B is solely for the lease agreement. Correct. And you just happen to also be sharing that through those conversations that there was discussion of a potential change and potential um, dual role that you might be able to play should both bodies agree, but that is not related to At what least. we are voting on tonight. Is correct. that correct? Okay. Correct. Thank you. Okay. Is there any more discussion? Go ahead, Ms. Commissioner Fowler. Um, so we're currently paying about 3500 bucks a month, right? Correct. And what is the new amount? It could go up to 150% of No, it, it would be the same as we would have in the first month in the lease. Um, Which that was, is? That is in the lease agreement that was provided. Uh, 33.119 and 0.28 per month. Okay, thank you. And the um, CAM, if you remember the CAM charge goes back to zero. So we would not, not be paying that again. Okay. Is there any other discussion regarding this item? Any questions? Okay. Uh, this item is just for the lease agreement. So do I have a, uh, have a, a first and a second? Do I have a motion to approve? I think you have one. No, I did. I said we have a first and a second. You for you yes call yes. for the call for the button. madam clerk do I have a roll call I said <laughs> yeah no, I said we have a first and a second madam clerk roll call please commissioner Ayon aye commissioner Couch yes commissioner Fowler yes commissioner Flores yes commissioner Arias aye commissioner McKibben yes commissioner Saragoza 
Aye. All ayes motion passed. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Moving to 10C, request for signature SB 1209 contours identification update. Mr. Knox. Yeah, just last month I brought this letter to you to uh, pr provide the governor on SB 1209, which is the indemnification bill. Um, I had some issues with it. The governor signed it. Uh, the governor has, has not provided a signature letter, which is not required, but often happens. So we don't know whether he took into consideration our concerns. But I am going to go back to Cal Lafco, who was the sponsor of the bill, and say, can we clean this up this next year? So that's my, my update on that. Thank you. This is not, it's, it's just informational. Yes. So we're going to move on to 10D, Executive Officer Miscellaneous Items. Go ahead, Mr. Knox. Yes. I have been promising you a rather large meeting with Miniax annexations for some time. For a variety of reasons, several of these proceedings have been delayed. It will likely be the December 4th meeting that we will see multiple annexations. In addition, we'll have a vote on next year's chair, meeting schedule, and my favorite, which is my evaluation and contract negotiation. Uh, several of you have elections on number, November 5th. My best wishes, and I hope your elections are successful and continue to work, and then we would love to continue to work with each of you. If for some reason there's mass voter fraud and you are unsuccessful in your race, <laughs> uh, we will still need you here at the December meeting. Uh, January could also be a large meeting. Uh, among the items uh, will be executive officers' evaluations. Since I was first hired, we have had a form to fill out and have had minimal, minimal discussions over the years. And I question a little bit whether to continue to use that method. And instead, I propose that I provide something like a roadmap for the, for the next several years and how LAFCO can utilize the authority provided to, the, to this agency to develop sound government structure, structures that both are well run and provide excellent services throughout the county. I'm not asking for a formal vote, but if that is something that you would like for me to provide next month or would like me to continue with a typical process. Any thoughts on that? I have a thought on something else. Okay. Which was, the uh, question is how many annexations do you think are going to be on the December 4th meeting? And are they sort of routine or are they large and contentious and will it be a long night? And if it's going to be a long night, where I'm going with that is why don't we just schedule your review for the January meeting? It's just a suggestion. Thank you. We can leave it both on there and you can continue my item to January if we get too late. We've done that. We've actually done that before. Go ahead, Mr. Saragosa. Right. Uh, to follow up on what uh, Commissioner Coates said and, and to some degree what uh, Executive Officer Blair uh, said, I believe it would be probably prudent for maybe a uh, subcommittee or policy committee or whatever committee to look at what he suggested for some type of defined quantitative evaluation method or process for the executive officer for the next 12 months because right now the way I see it there doesn't appear to be any um, uh, proper quantitative analysis it's more of a this is what I did and this is what I plan to do um, that's my personal opinion and if so it should be done ASAP so we can get this going by January it's my thoughts thank you Mr. Saragosa is there any other Comments, questions? Go ahead, Commissioner Addis. Thank you. Um, I believe I made this comment the last time we talked about it. Um, I don't see any glaring conflict of interest, but always to err on the side of caution. I would encourage us to empower the chair uh, to reach out to uh, this organization's legal counsel and to get them to opine on this white paper that's been presented uh, to this body and uh, to ensure that there, in fact, are no conflicts of interest. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? Go ahead, Ms. Fowler. Um, I guess I'm con confused a little bit. So we're working just on your contract for the future Correct. rather than a possible association with Kern Cog? Correct. That's what will be on our agenda. Until Kern Cog moves, we're going to continue to operate as a single agency. <clears throat> And even if they do move, you may decide that this isn't the direction you want to go. Okay. Okay, thank you, Mr. Knox. That concludes your report. Oh, no, I got more. All right. Um, well, before we let go, 
point, are we going to take the advice of our council member on legal review based on that management proposal that was submitted to Kern Cog? Um, there are potential legal con conflicts since LAFCO is a legal authority granted by law and the COG is not. It's more MOU joint powers agreement. A lot of issues can, can be resolved or not resolved without legal review. And I'm in support of uh, Councilman Arias' suggestion. Is this a vote item or can we just direct staff or Tom you, Schroeder to look into it? We would have to have our legal team. It's not on the agenda. Actually, Tom and I have already looked into that. Um, we, we found no conflict. But we could go actually go as far as asking the attorney general to make a an opinion on the matter, which would. I would like to see a legal written response. Okay, we go can ahead, do that. Go ahead, Commissioner Couch. How did you know I punched in? I just know. <laughs> guys, that's my spidey head. sense. Good, good, good telepathy here. Hey, uh, <clears throat> doesn't the situation exist somewhere else in California where the. LAFCO executive director is also also acts as the COG executive director. Tulare County, but uh, in that case, they are um, county employees, so it's a little different. But they are they are essentially doing both. Is that the only one though? I thought there were maybe others. There may be others. That's the one I keep looking to. <laughs> okay. Because it's you're, the you're one, correct, one I, I'm more. Con I'm uh, right, because that's the only one I believe. But they're all under the board. Uh, the board supervisors has jurisdiction on both of those in the Tulare. The Board of Supervisors has jurisdiction over the LAFCO board in Tulare and the COG board? Are they the, is it one and the same, is what, you, is what you're saying? I believe there is some type of, the, the counties can act as a LAFCO, whether or not it's staff doing that or somebody who represents one of the representatives of the supervisor. I, I don't know for a fact, and I might be misspoke on that, but I don't think they're separated. So there are LAFCOs that are run by... Uh, the, the county government. Um, mostly they're just very small counties who have maybe one city and two, two special districts. So having a full staff doesn't make sense. Uh, but there is a board that is separate from the board of supervisors uh, and, it, and it operates as a board separately than the board, board of supervisors. Yes. I am correct, I guess. Okay. Um, is there any way uh, to get this on on you know on paper from our legal team and just get it out of the way before we have our next meeting, and then make sure there's no conflict of interest and we move forward? Yes. Okay. I can take care of that. Thank you. Continue with your uh, report. Okay. Uh, in the past several months, I've discussed Inyo Kern Community Service District. The district continues to have issues. In the last month, they have had another water outage. The chair quit, uh, the board of directors, and the general manager quit. Uh, so the situation is not getting better. Yesterday, Indian Wells Valley Water District had a meeting to review the, the expenses incurred and provide their take on the physical improvements that need to happen to bring the district up to standards. Uh, Indian Wells Valley Water District is the district that's been helping them out when their water goes down. Uh, so they have a... Um, a very much an interest, in, in, and I believe that they already have $30,000 worth of expenses put into this, into a district that's already broke. So um, uh, we are going to be me meeting with their management team in In Wells Valley next week to discuss the next steps, and I'm not sure why the state board has not taken over the district yet and hired someone to run it on a temporary basis, but that should be coming soon, uh, it's my hope. Uh, so keeping you informed on, on a district that's continuing to be a struggle. Uh, next month, I will propose a meeting schedule for 2025. I reached out to the city of Bakersfield to discuss whether we can move back to the fourth Wednesday of the month, and I received less than encouraging response. Um, they apparently like having the second and fourth Wednesday instead of the first and third. Um, uh, if we continue to use the third Wednesday, I will bring a s schedule similar to what we are currently operating under with a couple of options for the November or December meeting. We often have the commission meeting the first Wednesday after Thanksgiving, which is not great for staff who have to have everything finished the Wednesday before Thanksgiving. And for um, commissioners, sometimes it's hard to read your packet over that uh, 
Thanksgiving weekend. So um, maybe we can look at some other options there. I can also bring a schedule that returns us to the 4th, but then you know that would be helpful for cities like Ridgecrest, uh, who have their meetings at the same time, like Commissioner Bruin having to be there. Um, but then that puts the city of Bakersfield back in a different, yeah, it's one of those kind of deals. So, but I, I will bring you multiple options so we can look at those. Should we have a vote on that? Because our city is going to be going to the first and first and third Wednesdays. So shouldn't we have a majority vote? <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. It will be a vote of, of this commission of which. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Uh, uh, that's it. The next meeting will be uh, December 6th, which is the Wednesday after Thanksgiving. And I hope the Dodgers are up by now. But do I, won't, any, I don't want to know until I get home. Do we have any closed session? Any items for closed session? Unless you want to talk about the Kern Cog white paper, then no. No. Okay. Thank you. Uh, our next scheduled meeting is Wednesday, December 4th. Um, do I have a motion to? It says December 4th. It's here. the 6th. Okay. Yeah, it says on the 4th in the agenda. That's okay. It's a typo. We'll go four to six. We'll just add two. It is a six. And that's what the Dodgers are up to zero. But I didn't just tell you that. But go ahead. I'm sorry. What just date kidding. is it? Wednesday, the, uh, December 6th. I'm a Giants fan. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. So it's the fourth. That doesn't make any That's the fourth? Oh, I know what I do. I know what I'm doing. I'm looking at November. Yeah. It's the fourth. My apologies. That's okay. What mo month? December? December. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Our next scheduled meeting is Wednesday, December 4th. Yes. Okay. Uh, correct. Do, I have a motion, do I have a motion to adjourn? Motion by Vince. Who was it? Zaragoza. Motion by Commissioner Zaragoza, second by Commissioner Fowler. Okay. Madam Clerk, may I have a roll call, please? Commissioner Ayon? Aye. Commissioner Couch? Yes. Commissioner Flores? Yes. Commissioner Fowler? Yes. Commissioner Arias? Aye. Commissioner McKibben? Yes. Commissioner Saragoza? Aye. All eyes, motion passed. Thank you, Madam Clerk. That ends our meeting at 622. Meeting adjourned.